Good evening. Welcome to Shiloh. Everybody's how is everybody doing tonight? How's everybody in the sound booth doing tonight? Good to have y'all here tonight. If you're a plea, let's stand to our feet today. It is, God has been good today. It's, we're halfway through the week, but God's with us every step of the way we make. And let's lift our voice because, because of tomorrow, because of today, and because of tomorrow, yesterday, and today, and tomorrow. He's with us every day because he lives. We can face every bit of that. Praise God for that tonight. Amen. Aren't you glad he's alive tonight? Aren't you glad he's living and not just living somewhere on a throne, but living in your heart tonight? Amen. 
renewing strength in you daily and continually. Oh, what a great moment it is to be in the house of the Lord. There's just something special about assembling together with those of like faith. I was thinking we were talking, and I guess what kind of got my mind on it, I'd been watching buying uh, beachfront property this afternoon. I just like to watch those shows, <laughs> seeing those beautiful houses. You know, it don't hurt to dream a little bit. Sitting there watching all those beautiful places and thinking about all the places that I have been in my life, though they couldn't compare to many others that have been to much grander places, but the memory that I have of the places I've been, thinking about the beauty that it beheld and how I sat in a ray of those sunsets and those sunrises, and my wife would often say to me, "Baby, I'd say, baby, you missed the most beautiful sunrise. She'll say, I'll miss it again in the morning. I'm going to let you tell me about it. Amen. Uh, but you know, to, to each their own, so to speak. And I know there are a lot of places, and I do, as I was saying. There are a lot of places that I just, you know, you call that your, your special place. That place that you like to be. Your happy place. People have many different Many different phrases for it, but I can't think of anywhere that I'd rather be right now than right here in the presence of Almighty God. And I thank God for this place that we're able to assemble together with those of like faith. Iron sharpens iron and seeing your presence, being in your midst, hearing you worship God along beside of me. Uh, that is my place that I enjoy being in. So good to see you here tonight. We want to welcome the Lord's presence as we welcome those that are joining us through iChurch tonight. Those of you that have walked through this door, we appreciate you being here. We celebrate our young folks that are worshiping God next door. And we thank you, amen, for getting them here so they can be a part of that experience. Thank God for those that are working with them and uh, blessing them there tonight. But we just come into this house, entered into these gates and into this courts to praise and to honor God and to worship Him. That's exactly what we want to do in this room tonight. We want to worship the Lord. Amen. There are many failures in all of our lives. I focus on me now. There are many shortcomings and failures that I have in my life. But that one thing, I don't want to fail when it comes to my worship to the great I am. I may fail on many platforms and in many arenas. I may let many folk down, but I don't want to let him down. I want him to be pleased with me. I want him, amen, when he looks at me. To, I just believe that somehow God just enjoys our worship. We know so because the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. He come to hear it tonight, church. He come to hear your praise. He come to hear your worship. It's what the word said. He inhabited it. And if we don't do it, I'm wondering, is he going to be disappointed tonight? I don't want to disappoint my Lord. Amen. So good to see you here tonight. We want to worship Him tonight in spirit and in truth. We want to go to Him in prayer and we want to be mindful of those around us that are in need of a touch from the Master. Some that the enemy may be devouring and the enemy may be destroying tonight through their mind and through their thought process. Some that are addicted and are being controlled by substance that are seemingly larger than they are but friend they're not larger than God and we know tonight that our God is able to set them free and deliver them and that should be part of our prayer tonight remembering all of those things that we've talked about as the body of Christ that we need to be entering into this place praying and interceding and believing God and petitioning the Holy Spirit to come nigh unto us and do that tonight that we cannot do would you join me in welcoming him here tonight? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for every person that is in this room. We thank you, God, for those that are joining us through iChurch tonight. And God, we just believe that you're raising up a standard against the enemy and the wiles of the devil, God, as he comes against your children. We rebuke the devourer tonight on their behalf. There are some, God, that are they're angry at various things in various situations. But God, those things and those situations and those people, they're not the enemy. The enemy is Satan. He is the devourer. He is the accuser of the brethren. And we must identify and know who 
he is and what his schemes are. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this house. Embrace our hearts tonight. Refresh us, Lord, once again with the presence of Almighty God here in this house. Father, I thank you for every person that is in this room, those that are joining us through our church. We've come and we've assembled here tonight to worship you in spirit and in truth. We've come to celebrate you. We've come to call on the great I am tonight and to be able to execute our right to bless the name of the Lord tonight. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercies as we celebrate you here in this room. Have your way, Lord, in this service, and we'll be careful, God, to give you and you alone the glory, the honor, and the praise. This is your time, God. This is your moment, and we want to worship you in it tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church said amen and amen. Before you're seated, turn to your neighbor. Let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Love on them closely or from a distance, however you choose to do so. Amen. Good to see you all here tonight. Amen. We're excited. Amen. This coming Sunday, we're going to be uh, launching a quick mini-series. The Holy Spirit just impressed upon my heart this week. A uh, message that I've been working on now uh, for several months. And uh, the Holy Spirit said, now's the time. I like it when he does that. Uh, he is able to bring to completion. And then this morning in about four hours, it just like everything unfolded and laid right out before me as it's supposed to. You know that's God. But I just want to uh, remind you, kicking off this Sunday morning at 1030 right here in this room, uh, we're going to be discussing the great deceiver who seeks to destroy. We're going to identify Satan. I preached a message many, many years ago and I thought about hanging that title onto it inside of Satan's locker room. Uh, but uh, I'm not doing that because I've already run that horse by. But uh, we're going to be uh, looking at the great deceiver who seeks to destroy. It's going to be a two-week quick hit mini-series, but I can promise you some of the most powerful material I think that God has given me in a long time. And I look forward to that. And we want you to come and be a part of that. I want you to uh, be exposed to that. I just want to give you an opportunity to be able to invite someone. Uh, maybe you know someone that's struggling. Maybe you know someone that the enemy just seems to be uh, running rampant in their lives. I would encourage you to do your best to get them here uh, this coming weekend. Amen. Because I, I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to reveal some things through this message. Not because it's me preaching. Amen. I, I literally believe I could give this message to anybody else and let them speak it because the anointing and the power is on the words that it flows by the holy anointing of the Holy Spirit. So it's not about us, never about us, but it's about His Spirit. Amen. Our job is to lift Him up, and then His job is to draw all men unto Him. Amen. Looking forward to that. There are a couple other things I want to remind you of. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet, and I know many of you have already signed up. I think Tammy said 40-some already. Uh, our target goal is 50 because at 50 it gets cheaper. Amen. So uh, at any rate, we want to invite you to the Feville Woodpecker Friday night, June the 24th at 7 p.m. It is our Shiloh family night out, and we just look forward to a great time of fellowship and uh, just looking forward to that. want to remind you also that... Uh, um, May the 29th, we need all this information in on our students, our graduates. Make sure you see Kelly or see Miss Rita. Uh, make sure you have that information to them uh, because our graduation Sunday is May the 5th and they need that no later than the 29th. Uh, please help us with this. I, I, I just cannot, uh, I cannot say it plain enough. Make sure you get us your kids and grandkids' information because the last thing we want to do is leave anyone out. So please make sure that is taken care of. Also, one last punch on this. If anyone uh, has a child that they are interested in sending to Falcon Youth Camp, please see me or Ashley before you leave service tonight. And uh, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Are you Amen. glad to be here? Amen. Amen. Let us worship the Lord together tonight. Praise God. They 
talking now for several weeks about a praying church. Why is it so important, preacher? Because a praying church is a powerful church. I want to say that again. A praying church is a powerful church. Now, remember when we're talking about the church, we're talking about His temple. 
When we're speaking about the church, we're not talking about this facility, this building. Uh, because the church is wherever we establish it. Amen? You know, for the longest time, over a hundred years, church, when we said church at Shiloh, it was next door. And then all of a sudden, church at Shiloh was in a parking lot on a flatbed trailer. And now church at Shiloh is in this bridge building. This coming Sunday, you know, we, we could have church out on the highway or the hedges. Church is not the establishment of this place, but it is uh, the process of you and I being the dwelling place of the presence of God. It is the temple of the Lord. Brother Terry and them has an Easter service. Don't know what that's all going to turn into before it's over with, but they have an Easter service out in the yard there by a cross in their, at their house. Amen. They got, they got a core of people that are coming there. It, it doesn't matter what the facility looks like. What matters is what our heart looks like. Because God doesn't look on the outward appearance. All this that we're doing in here, it's for, it's for you and I. Amen. It's for, really and truthfully, it's for Phil and Tammy and others like them. Uh, it is for the process, and some of y'all got that, but it is for the process, amen, of, of us looking at it and it pleasing us and it blessing us. Amen. But it doesn't really matter about the structure. What matters is the content that is going on at that particular place, in that dwelling. So a praying church, in other words, the vessel, you and I, we become powerful when we become a praying church. When we as a dwelling of the Holy Spirit take on the, uh, the position of prayer, then we become powerful. Um, Sister Betty Melton, Pastor Betty Melton says it like this, little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. In essence, what she's saying is a praying church is a powerful church. So if you will, let's look together tonight at Acts chapter 2, verse 42, 43, and 44 as we hear what the Word of God has to say. They devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and to fellowship. To the breaking of bread and to prayer. You see, folks, all of this other stuff that we do without prayer, it has little value. Everything that we do, when we add prayer to it, when prayer becomes that, that saturates it, that moves it, that motivates it, then it becomes powerful whatever it is that we're doing. Because how many of you know little is much with God? Amen. Uh, limited is only when we don't allow God to have it in His hands. You see, when a little lunch, when a few fish and a few pieces of bread hit the Master's hands, He lifted it up towards heaven and the Bible said He blessed it and then immediately little became much. Amen, to feed 5,000, not counting women and children. It's interesting to me that the little guy that gave his lunch won't even count it in the number. You see, but I want you to know, <laughs> he lay up treasures where rust and moth cannot corrupt. And it doesn't matter who's doing the counting, amen, because I just come to tell you tonight, a lot of us are very insignificant and unimportant when it comes to the standards of this world, but how many of you know God, when God gets in the mix, everything changes, amen. And I thank God for that tonight. They devoted themselves to the apostle teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. The Bible said everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostle. You know why? Because of prayer. Amen. Then verse 44 said, All the believers were together and had everything in common. When you and I get together, I like the way the, the first church in Acts said it. They got in one place and they got in one accord. And when they got in one place and they got in one accord, there was one God that showed up. Amen. Amen. And when one God showed up in the midst of some people that were in one place and in one accord, that is the reason why it's so important, guys, that we assemble ourselves together. Amen. Amen. 
And I know we can do that by many means now. And I thank God for that. I I don't reject that. I openly receive that. And I celebrate the fact that tonight there are people that are able to join us on our church that aren't sitting in this room with us, but they're in fellowship and in harmony with us. And they can be in one accord with us even though they're not assembled together here in one place. But by that connection, it puts us as one together in Christ Jesus. Jesus, and because of that, we're able, amen, able to see God's hand and see the power and the presence of God moving, amen. A praying church is a powerful church, and a powerful church is a productive church, and a productive church is a progressive church. Prayer is to the church what oxygen is to the body. My Lord, how mercy. If you're a tweeter, tweet it. Amen. I'm just encouraging you, if you're a tweeter, tweet it. Amen. Prayer is to the church what oxygen is to the body. Matter of fact, if you ain't a tweeter and you're a Facebooker, Facebook it. Amen. Amen. And and if you ain't a Facebooker and you're a phone caller, pick up the phone when you get home and call somebody and just tell them, Hey, I want to tell you prayer is to the church what oxygen is to the body. Amen. Amen. Because when we get this stuff and we begin to nail it down, God can begin to use it for His glory. See, to pray is to live and not to, and not to pray is to die. Did you hear it? Because if your body don't get oxygen, you're going to die. And the problem is there's too many people trying to live a spiritual life without prayer and they're dying. Honey, I want to tell you something. If every time you walk out this door, it feels like you ain't going to make it till you get back here again. I think there's a certain attribute to that that brings joy and power and strength and we understand that. But honey, I want to tell you something. If you're scrambling just to stay saved till you can get back in church again, hey man, you need to pray some more. Amen. I'm just telling you right now because there's a God in heaven that His ear is open to your cry. Amen. And the Bible said that it is His good pleasure to give you the keys to the kingdom and God wants you to walk in, to live in, and to experience an abundant life. How do I know that? Because He said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Honey, I want to tell you something tonight. If you feel like you're suffocating under the pressure of this world, amen, you need to pray more and get hold of a powerful God that is able to raise you up, amen, above the things of this world in the level of oxygen that you're able to breathe and conduct in, amen. Amen. See, the problem is too many of us church folks try to live down there in the muck and the mire and there's no oxygen down there and therefore we cannot thrive. We're just hanging on and holding on and pleading with God to get us through. Amen. 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 To pray is to live and not to pray is to die. In biblical and historical times, praying churches had exertion, testimonials, power, and impact on the world. Prevailing prayer shaped the world's history. It is, however, unfortunate that in many churches today, the prayer fire is dying down. This is due to materialism, church politics, compromise, unbiblical practices, reckless manipulation, of lives, secret sin, carnal indulgence, over-rationalizing, too much learning, and empty religion. Amen. Church, we need to pray. Amen. We need to pray because I'm telling you there are scales that will attach themselves to us as bacteria on poles stuck into the water. And the first thing we know, we will be so heavy laden, (laughs) we'll find no rest. But I have good news to you, and the good news is, He said, come unto me, all you that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you 
rest. You know what the access is? It's called praying. If you'll begin to talk to him, communicate to him, amen, listen to him, hear what he is saying to you in his prayer language. Honey, it's right here in his word. It's called his prayer language, amen. And he wants to speak it into you because in that book you'll find power to live. You'll find power that will be possessed upon you in such a way that you will have power and dominion over the enemy that has set sail against your soul, amen. I'm going to preach it as long as there's breath in me. I'm telling you tonight, church, there's a better way to live. Amen. I see too many people that are professing Christians and it feels like all they can do is keep their head above water. I don't find that anywhere in God's Word. God said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, I come that you are victorious. Amen. I come and in me... There is no weapon that can be formed, amen, that will set against you, amen. Why? Because God said when you're in me, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world, amen. Preacher, you say that all the time. I'm going to say it as long as you're not getting it, amen. (laughs) When I start seeing you walk in that door and bringing about five with you when you come and shouting the whole time you're here, I'm going to say I can sit down because they got it, amen. But the Bible said as long as we're in this flesh, we're going to be at war. There are going to be good days and there are going to be bad days in all of our lives. Amen. I'm just going to be honest with you. Some days it's all we can do to get up and throw one foot in front of the other. It's amen or oh me. Amen. If you never find yourself in that state, please pray for your pastor because he finds himself in that state once in a while. Amen. It's all I can do. My wife told me last night, she said, some days it's all I can do to put one foot in front of the other. I don't know if I got this leftover COVID or not. I said, no, you ain't got leftover COVID. You got coming 60 on you. Amen. (laughs) I mean, many of us give the devil way, 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 way too much credit. Amen. Amen. You know what God said? God said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Rise above those things. Become a house of prayer. Let go and let God have His way. Amen. When you feel like it and when you don't feel like it, get up and do it anyhow. Worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Oh, I would tonight that somebody would just get happy in the Lord and help me preach. Amen. Because I come to tell you tonight, God is for us. Amen. God said, I'm an overcomer, amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against a praying church, amen. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God, hallelujah. A powerless church does not please nor glorify God because there is an absence of manifestation of the supernatural in the church, which is one of the major characteristics of the church of the Acts of the Apostles. You see, the early days of the church, they witnessed the power of God moving in miraculous ways. 3,000 people were saved on one occasion, according to Acts 2 and 41, and 5,000 were saved on another occasion, according to Acts 4 and 4. The early church was marked by the manifestation and the presence and the power of Almighty God. He was on them to such a degree that fear came upon every soul, according to Acts 2 and 43. The church was growing God was glorified, Jesus was being preached, and sinners were being saved. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're part of a growing church? Aren't you glad you're part of a church that is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? Amen. Whether we like it or not, the word is being preached. Amen. And I just want to apologize, not for the word, But I want to apologize for my mannerism sometime and my characteristics sometime and my inability to get the word across to you as believers. But honey, I don't apologize for the word of God. Amen. And I don't apologize for the fervency in which I preach the word of God. Amen. Because I'm hungry for your soul to make it to heaven. Amen. 
and I'm angry at the devil that is tormenting you and depriving you of the life that God wants you to have in him. Amen. And I know that makes the devil angry. I know it does. I know that does. And that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is that we don't identify and understand the enemy that is at hand. Because he is at war against us. Honey, I'm preaching it. I'm forewarning you. Not me, the Holy Spirit is. I've told every one of us, check ourselves at that door. Because I promise you, I'm going to say or do something you don't like. And if you let the devil slip in, I promise you, he'll drive a wedge between you and me. And he'll drive a wedge between you and her and, and him and him and, and it and it and that and that and we and we and all everything. After a while, you go home, your dog won't even like you. Amen. I ain't even got a dog, so don't say he's talking about himself. Amen. Amen. My neighbor's dog likes me because he stays at my house more than he stays at home. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, the early church witnessed the power of God in a miraculous way that moved the body of Christ. Amen. Now, let's get this. The Jewish leaders had tried to arrest the apostles and forbidding them to preach the gospel according to Acts 4, 1 through 23. We've studied that now for about four weeks. That did not work, so they arrested Stephen. We heard about that. They tried him and stoned him to death in an effort to stem the growth of the church. We knew all about that. This failed to achieve the desired results as well. The Jews continued their effort to stop the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They used hired guns like Saul of Taurus, but he wound up getting saved. <laughs> Thank you, God. They persecuted the saints and many members of the church were scattered to the four winds of the earth. Still, the church continued to grow and to prosper. You know why? Because they were a praying church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 12, we see Herod seeking to curry favor with the Jews. He arrested James, the brother of John, and had him killed. When he saw this pleased the Jews, he arrested Peter, put him into prison. Four weeks now, we've studied about it, and planned to kill him too. Herod ordered guards to watch Peter. It is important to point out that Peter arrived in this prison through no fault of his own. The offenses Peter committed was simply preaching the gospel. Amen. While Peter was in prison, the church of Acts of the Apostles offered prayer to God for Peter's deliverance. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. They prayed intently, earnestly, and without ceasing. How do I need to be praying, church? How do I need to be praying? Amen. I need to be praying intensely. I need to be praying earnestly. And I need to be praying continually. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The church prayed and they kept on praying until God dispatched an angel from the celestial shores of Shekinah glory to rescue Peter. Herod had already concluded plans to execute Peter the following morning, but the night before, somebody say just in time, the night before the next morning, Peter was to be woke up and said to him, Arise, the chains that they bound Peter with fell off Peter's wrist, and the angel took Peter out of the prison. Peter made his way past the guards, and the iron gate swung wide open all by itself. That's God. You know why? Because of a praying church. Amen. If we must restore the church of Acts of the apostles in our time, witness unusual divine visitation and participate in the ongoing end time charismatic revival, we must restore the spirit of prayer to our churches. Amen. This is the only way. I'm going to say it again. This is the only way to experience a fresh 
visitation of God's Spirit and God's power. There is no other way. Amen. James chapter 5 and verse 16 is true in its teaching. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, it will avail of much. Prayer generates tremendous power and produces uncommon results. I like what C. Spurgeon said. Prayer moves the arm that moves the world. Amen. Listen, prayer generates tremendous power and produces uncommon results. So what do I do, preacher? How about let's pray him? And this is what I need to pray. Lord, restore the spirit of prayer in our churches. I want to ask you to join me. I just want to ask you to join me. How long, preacher? Till God's hand moves. Amen. God, what I want more than anything else, I want the power of prayer restored to the body of Christ. And I'm not just talking about, what was it, half a dozen women today? Thank God for a half a dozen women. But I'm telling you something. Wake up. It ain't up to a half a dozen women to carry the burden of a church of 150. That's good preaching right there, Pastor. It's up to me and you. And when do I need to pray? I need to pray without ceasing. I need to pray on the highways and the hedges. I need to pay, pray everywhere in between. I need to pray when I get up and I need to pray when I sit down. Amen. I need to pray when I'm going in. And I need to pray when I'm coming out. Because church, I'm telling you something. Prayer will change things. I'm going to tell you something else. Prayer will make the devil mad. Amen. You get ready because I'm just telling you, when God's people begin to pray, God's blessings going to start falling and the devil's going to get mad. Amen. But honey, I'd rather the devil be mad than God be mad. Because God said it's a dangerous thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. Will you stand to your feet tonight? Will you join me? I'm not asking you to commit to me because I'm telling you how that goes. I've been in this a day or two. I mean, y'all volunteer. Poop. People volunteer because that's the expectation that we want out of people. Yeah, I'll help you, preacher. I got you. We'll do this. I'm not asking you to volunteer to me. I want you to volunteer to God. God, I'm going to take this thing to heart and I'm going to start praying. I want the coals of the altar of prayer to be revisited in my heart. I want the fervency of the power of the Holy Spirit to come alive in me. I want more of God. I want more of the manifestation of His Spirit. I want there to be such a convicting power of the Holy Ghost in this room on Sunday morning that when sinners walk in here, they can't stand to sit in that seat. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. I'm not talking about to lay me down to sleep. God, here's my eight things I want you to do for me today. I'm talking about hungering and thirsting after the power of God. I'm not talking about asking God for anything. I'm talking about getting hungry for a manifestation of God's presence in our midst. Amen. I want to see God move. Amen. I want to see the devil madder than he's ever been. Amen. He's going to get mad, I'm telling you. I'd rather the devil be mad than God. I can't think of a better way to do it than the way we're doing it. You got a better way? Come talk to me. I'm, in, I'm interested. I'm interested. Amen. I want it. I want whatever he's got. I, I'm, I'm tired, guys. I, I'm wore out. I am exhausted. I want the power of God in this house. I can't do it. But there's a God in heaven that can. I can't set men free. But there's a God in heaven that can. I can't deliver men, but there's a God that can.
I can't solve the rifts in people's hearts. But there's a God in heaven that can. I can't fix it. But there's a God that can. How's he going to do it? Through and by his word. Come on, brother, get ready. Whatever God's given you tonight, I hope he's given you something good because we need it. We need to pray that word. We need to let it be fervency in our heart. Amen. And the anointing. Because guys, I want to tell you something. A praying church is a powerful church. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can you hear me okay? There you go. Wow, again. How long have we been doing this now? About six weeks or so, Pastor? You know, I just got a quick question. Has anybody seen a difference in yourself personally? I know I have. I can be honest with you. I find myself now, I, I lay down praying. I wake up like so many may or may not do. I get up and go to the restroom in the middle of the night. When I get up, I'm like, I just praise you, Lord. It's just a constant. And I believe that's what's done that to me is, is what we've started doing here. And what he said so true, little power, little prayer. Now, we're, we're not looking to do things personally ourselves. We just want God to move. Amen. I, I've prayed so many times, and he mentioned again about that Shekinah glory. People don't realize, uh, uh, people do not get the true power that comes with that. When Jesus spoke in the garden, as they come to get him and they fell, when he announced who he, I'm he. You know, they used to tie a rope to the priest. They had bells on their, when they stopped hearing him move around, they wouldn't even go in because they knew the power, the presence of God was in that place. And I, I believe with all my heart that that, that that we are a group of people here that we can see that power and presence of God in this place. It's not just about here. I want it in our homes too. Because if Satan can begin to divide a home, he can pull you out of the church building. He can fix that problem if he can get so at home is where we want to begin to really see his presence. But we bring that presence with us when we come here. Amen. And I almost I'd almost change my verse tonight, but I as as the pastor was still speaking, it still it, it felt strong. In Proverbs chapter three, let me get back. Proverbs chapter three and verse eleven. It says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Let me just pray that now. Lord, I thank you that I can be accounted with your son by the adoption through the blood of Jesus Christ and the grace and the mercy. Lord, let us not get angry when you chasten us, chasten us. When you when you look at us and you begin to correct us, oh Lord, let us not get angry but be filled with joy because God, if you're if you're trying to correct us, that means we're hearing from you. So Lord, let us answer in that correction also. Because, God, you love us. You love us greater than any earthly father ever could. It doesn't matter whether they're a blood father or, or, or a foster dad or whatever it is. That man in our life could never love us as much as you do. So, God, help us. Correct us, O oh Lord. And I pray that we're seeking you in such a way that we can hear and be open 
to your speaking to us and correcting us and showing us the way in which because if we're seeking the way that you would have us to go oh Lord we're going to make mistakes Uh, we may turn to the right or to the left when we should have turned left or turned right but God I just pray right now over this body I, I, I take this moment to pray for myself in this moment that God you would just take out so much more of me and and, and fill me with you, O Lord. Hallelujah, because I can't do it. There's no way I can do it. Only by your power and by your strength, through your correction tonight, O God, can it be done. So I praise you and I give you the glory as I pray in that mighty name, that name above all names, Jesus Christ tonight. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I didn't really even look back tonight. But you know, I long to be in the house of God. I long to worship the Lord. And when I can't be in the house of God every other Sunday, y'all don't know how that makes me feel. But when the pastor was talking about the happy place, this is one of my happy places. But my happy place is in the early morning hours when I wake up when the girls are asleep and it's quiet in the house and I get along with God I search the scriptures and Lord this isn't new to me I pray the scriptures and I just become a praying church where there's power in my prayers because I can feel the power in my room and that's where my heart pants after God and I long for a living God to be manifested through me my scripture tonight is Psalm 42 1 through 5 and I'm actually using the New Living Translation tonight as the deer longs for streams of water oh God so I long for you I thirst for you God the living God when, when can I go and stand before you? Day and night, I have only tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sounds of great celebration. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart sad? I will put my hope in you, O God. I will praise you again, my Savior and my God. Lord, I just long for you, Lord. I thirst for you, Lord Jesus. May I never lose that thirst, dear God. May my heart always pant for you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, may I never lose the motivation, dear God, to, to read your word and to pray. And I pray for everybody in this house tonight, dear Jesus, to know what it means to thirst after a living God. In Jesus' name, praise you. testimony shut up in me just been so bust out but my mind won't let me tell it I need to write it down <laughs> but all of us all of us got this it, it comes from Mark 12 30 it says and thou shalt I love the Lord my God with all my heart and with all my soul and all my mind and all my strength. This is our first commandment and we all live by it. And Lord, I love you so much today and forever. I'm like Pastor Eddie says, wait to hear that word. Well done, done, my faithful servant. I love you so much. Father, you know my heart, you know my mind. It's not clear to me. so much. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I got 
several things on my heart tonight, but I want my pastor to know that I lift you up this morning. And if you're not lifting your pastor up, then he can't stand up here and do what he did tonight. That was preaching. You don't need to go down the road looking at nothing. It was Amen. right here. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. And I've been listening to Robert Jeffries every morning as I go down to work. And he's the pastor of First Dallas Baptist Church. Never met him. Not that I could meet him. Because I'm sure he's a lot higher on the pole than I ever be. But this morning, he touched my heart. Going down the road, tears flowing. He said, You got to give thanks in everything. Amen. Everything. I bought a lawnmower the other day down at the beach. Now, I'm used to a crank lawnmower. But now, Lord, have mercy if that lawnmower don't crank. You're talking about something that'll well up in me. And knowing what I got to do and fight to get it to go. Well, I could have done half the grass mow and been done with it. I hadn't got to go to car hardware because he's shut down now. But I used to have to give him a fortune all the time. But, and y'all are laughing, but y'all been there too. So. But I bought me a battery. A road. And it just smashes a button and you're ready to go. So I look. I too get up in the morning early. I too long to be with him in the morning. But guess what? What did he tell Adam? What did he look for in the garden? Adam didn't look for him. But God looked for him. He looks for me. A lot of times I don't let him find me. But help my heart return. Help me to be there. That's all I want to do. Is to be a person that my Savior would say when I see him. Well done, my good and faithful service. That's all my desire. Thank you, God, for everything. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. It can't get no better than that. You keep doing what you're doing. And I'm going to pray that he'll give you more strength, more energy. I know you don't want that prayer, but, <laughs> but you keep on keeping on. Amen. I'm here, and I know that a lot of these are is something that we went over this morning in our prayer group and it's Hebrews 13 6 and it says so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me Father God I praise you with everybody in me Lord, you are my God, and there is nothing that no one will ever do to harm me. Lord, you will protect me. You will protect my family in this church. You will protect our pastor. You will protect everyone. Father, there is nothing that enemy can do to destroy us, Father. Lord, we are looking and trusting and praying and believing. And knowing that miracles upon miracles are fixing to fall upon our congregation, Father. That there is going to be a mighty move of your spirit, Lord. That we're not going to care anymore about what's going on out in the world. But, Lord, we're going to lift your name. We're going to praise you. And we're going to love you with all of our hearts, soul, and mind. Father, we praise you tonight in Jesus' name.
reading from Matthew 37. The harvest truly is clear, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors into the harvest, into his harvest. I just try to thank the Lord to do my part. To, I don't see as many as people as I used to, but I try to invite people to the church. I know if they got a church, I'm not taking from the church that the pastor says, but I want to do my part for him. I want to see him in heaven one day. Lord, I just pray to let me speak boldly, dear Lord. Lord, I don't want to be ashamed of you, dear Lord. I want to lift you up. Lord, guide me. Guide my words to him, dear Lord. Let him see Jesus in me, dear Lord. And I love you, dear Lord, with all my heart. I give you the glory and the praise for it all in your name. in our prayer time this morning. I got up this morning and I could just feel this weight. I don't know if you've ever got up like that. But I do get up and study and pray, but I just felt this heaviness all day. And we had such a wonderful time studying God's Word today. My scripture tonight is Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Eddie, I want you to come down here with me. And I want you to pray for me. <laughs> Only me and him know the <laughs> burden we carry for this church. <laughs> we love you. We love this church, this body. You are our family. And sometimes the enemy comes against us. His presence so strong in human life. I don't know what his plan is, but I've had this feeling I always ain't alone. I love you, Lord. Jesus. And your mercy never fails me. Oh, my dear. I've been healed by Thank you. 
darkest night. You're close like no other. I've known you as a father. Thank you, Jesus. I've known you as a friend. And I am in the goodness of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We've got so much to look for. We've got so much to look for. Oh, my life. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you